Today we are going to take a look at the video editing performance of the Mac Mini M4, M4 Pro, Mac Studio M1 Max and comparing with the Mac Mini M1. We will be using Final Cut Pro 11 exclusively. I've done two tests, real world tests, so that you can decide if you need the M4, M4 Pro or if you are on the market for a used machine like a Mac Studio M1 Max or even a Mac Mini with M1, M2 or M2 Pro. Or if you already have a Mac and you're trying to decide if you want to upgrade for a M4 or M4 Pro for video editing in Final Cut Pro 11. So the first test is a project that I did share here already on my channel. It has 106 gigabytes of storage which I did pass to the internal SSD of each of these Macs. The project is made by videos coming from a DJI Action 4, Insta360 X4, iPhone 16 Pro and Pixel 9 Pro. The timeline is 4K with 14 minutes and 20 seconds. Usually this kind of project on the M1 is configured to create proxies and optimized media so that it has a decent performance and a fluid editing which on the M1 I do feel that on these bigger projects we struggle to edit with a fluid timeline without proxies or optimized media. Nonetheless for this particular test I did delete the files that were created by the M1 when we did the project original so that all my are equal and no optimized files at all. What we do feel while editing on the M4, M4 Pro or M1 Max is that we don't need optimized media because it will handle really well without any struggle whatsoever, fluid timeline. So editing here on these machines, forget about it, the experience will be exactly the same. We will not feel difference, at least for this level of testing and real world performance. Now on the M1, the story is different. We can see the M1 skipping some frames. It's a lot sluggish, so the experience is not as smooth. And if we look at the rendering times, the Mac Mini M4 Pro took 5 minutes and 50 seconds rendering to a HEVC file. The M4 took 6 minutes, the M1 Mac Mini took 7 minutes and the Mac Studio with the M1 Mac took 3 minutes and 46 seconds. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price. And with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description, it will get even cheaper. And besides Windows 11 Pro, if you are looking for Windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our Microsoft account, Account, you can use the same coupon code which will give you the best price possible at this moment. So just in case the link will be down below. So this is something that we will see across any of the rendering tasks, the Mac Studio with the M1 Max beating any other M4 or M4 Pro and this is easy to explain because the Mac Studio M1 Max has two decoders and encoders while the M4, M4 Pro or the other M's only have one encoder decoder. Only after the Max we will get two encoders decoders and we will see a lot of difference in rendering times just because of that. Really interesting is also to check out the resource consumption of any of these devices and I've got a graphic here with the data that I gather while doing these tests and you can see here on screen while editing and while rendering on Final Cut Pro 11 that 14 minutes 20 seconds timeline M4 Pro, we can see that the M4 Pro was using about 14% CPU, 30% GPU and 56% of RAM, while the M4 was about the same here on the GPU, actually a bit lower, but on RAM 72%. I will need to double check this result here on the GPU of the M4 being less used than the M4 Pro, but I have the B-roll footages that you can see right over there. So if I did any mistake by writing wrong the value, apologize for that. Now one interesting thing as well is that we can see that the M1 is using more CPU, more GPU, a lot more GPU, and then the RAM is almost on the limit. And then finally the M1 Max on the M Studio using more CPU than the other machines. Using the two encoders and decoders can also explain why it's using more CPU. And then on the 
the RAM 51, but I did notice while I was rendering, I had Chrome and Firefox open. It was about 70 something percent. And then after closing it, because that's a real world machine that I actually used to work every single day. And what happened was that it had everything open as I do. I'm editing videos, I'm rendering videos, I'm browsing the web, receiving emails and things like that. So this is a real world scenario. Now let's go to the second test. And on the second test, we went further. So I did a four clip timeline with footage from DJI Action 4, Insta360 X4, iPhone 16 Pro and Pixel 9 Pro. I did reduce it by 50% on the scale and I did put the footage on top of each other so that we can have a four angle multi-camera simulation right over here. All of them at 4K reduced by 50%. Besides that, I also applied a color board artificial light to one layer, one comic look effect to another layer, one stabilization to another layer. I also cut the clip in five so that we could apply some transitions to push out the GPUs. And then finally, one other color grading effect on the last clip. Now, in terms of the editing, the M4, M4 Pro and the M1 Max, everything was really fluid without any issues whatsoever. But we can see right over there that the resources are a lot higher and I will share with you also the results while rendering but we can also see that the M1 it's really struggling to keep up with this kind of project it skips frames and it's not fluid and hopefully I can pass that with the b-roll that I did record the GPU is hitting at 100% a lot of the times so it's not the kind of project that we can do with the M1. Now looking at the rendering times we can see that the M4 Pro took 31 seconds rendering this project, the M4 took 42 seconds, the M1 took 1 minute and 30 seven seconds and then finally the m1 max took 25 seconds now the graphic that you are seeing right over there it's all in seconds like the previous graphic but let's take also a look at the resources used on this project not only on editing but also on rendering so we can see here the m4 pro just using 18 percent the cpu 70 percent gpu so this project is pushing the gpu because of the effects that we did apply and also because it has four four K clips on the same timeline, one on top of the other, which is not easy for any machine. By the way, one minute and 37 seconds. If we multiply by 10, we are, we are talking about 13 seconds of rendering times on the M1, which is a time that we could just grab a glass of water and then come back. The problem with the M1 in this particular case is that on the editing, we will really struggle and it won't be a pleasure to edit. So although we can see that the results are not far away from the M1 and the M4, M4 Pro, M1 Max, the experience is completely different. Now, taking a look here at the GPU of the M4, we can see that 94%, 80% on the RAM, which is also nice to see that we still have room. And then on the M1, reaching the 96, 100%. The CPU usage in Final Cut, it's nothing huge for this kind of usage and then the RAM reaching almost the maximum here the M1 Max with 32% of CPU usage because the CPU on the M1 Max is being pushed as well because of the two encoders decoders the GPU here is reaching high values much higher than the M4 Pro although it has the advantage on the GPU and then the RAM 73% which is more on par with the M4 so in conclusion, should you upgrade, should you buy one of these devices to edit your videos, I would say that let's start with the M1. If you are starting out and you are editing 4K videos on a timeline without any crazy effects and without many transitions, you will be able to do that. We have been editing me and my oldest son videos on a daily basis for two channels, one in English and one in Portuguese, and we do fine. He does the editing on the M1 and then I finish the project on the M1 Max. So that's totally possible without any issues whatsoever. We just need to have in mind the kind of project that we do, the kind of effects that we apply. And of course, if we need a multi-camera project here and there, we can apply optimized media and proxies. So no issues whatsoever. 
ever. So if you find on the used market, which is easy to find right now, an M1, M2 or even M2 Pro, it can be a great deal. We don't need to go jumping to the M4, M4 Pro, whatever. We don't. But on the other hand, if you are taking things a little bit more serious, then I would look at two things. First of all, the M4 for this kind of work is a beast. It just works great. It beats everything and it's more than what we really need to accomplish all these kinds of projects. So I would say that the smarter choice is the M4 budget-wise and performance-wise. But if you are on a doubt, okay, but I can spend more and go to the M4 Pro, should I get it because I will be able to have it for longer, I would say that it's a good move but i would also look at the used market for the m1 max or m2 max max studio because that can be also a great deal because as you could see in terms of performance in terms of the rendering times and in terms of editing the experience will be in most cases the same or better so if you were thinking that i would say hey get the m4 or m4 pro right now there is a lot to think about it even though we only talked about video editing in final cut pro today so if you want to have a real idea of what we can achieve with these machines in other tasks cpu tasks that we didn't today and others stay tuned to the channel if you still haven't subscribed please consider doing it so, so that i can keep on delivering this kinds of videos which is great to share it's great to record and it's great to edit on any of these machines. If the video was helpful, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.